The latest Minecraft Bedrock Edition beta released by Mojang fixes one of the biggest redstone bugs on Bedrock Edition. This is going to introduce so many new things that we can do in the game. It's going to upgrade so many farms and it's going to revolutionize a storage system. This is something I've personally been waiting for for way too long. But wait, there's more. Mojang also released a hot fix for Bedrock Edition this last week that fixed another major bug with pistons and also removed a duplication glitch. And there was also another beta Data released with even more good changes. Mojang is doing a lot of good stuff. So what's this legendary bug fix that I'm so excited about? Well, it has to do with hoppers and hopper minecarts and therefore all types of storage systems forever, especially mass storage for big farms like raid farms, guardian farms, gold farms, anything that produces a ton of items, this bug affects. So basically what's happening here is anytime you have yourself an item filter or a hopper that's trying to collect a specific type of item, like gold, for example, if there is any other type of item above it, such as a rotten flesh or anything else, it is going to only try to pick up that rotten flesh no matter what else is above it. So that piece of gold right there will never go into that hopper. Of course, this also happens with hoppers as well. And you're probably thinking, well, that's not too big of a deal, right? You can work around that. But you're wrong. It's a huge deal. This one little problem right here has cost me dozens of hours of my life. So here we are in the latest beta. And if we throw any item that we want on top, of this hopper and then throw a piece of gold on it as you can see it's actually gonna get collected as it should and this is just long overdue this is one of the most upvoted bug reports on the bug tracker with 750 or so upvotes i've been struggling with this bug since august of 2020 it has been a pain in my side for over two years i literally spent dozens of hours designing various types of storage systems just to work around this one issue so if you have a mega farm like a speed piglin trader that gives you like 1 million items an hour or an insane raid farm guardian farm or anything else that gives you a bunch of items you're probably going to end up with a bunch of items clumped up like this in a big pile and because of this bug this group of items will never get completely sorted a lot of this is going to get wasted so if we launch all these items as you see most of those go through the overflow and only a couple of those guys actually picked up any items at all and we have multiple item sorters for all these guys we got four or leather item sorters basically everything just went to the overflow into our garbage can so we need to reduce the flow of items in our item sorters and there's two ways to do that you can either shoot out items one at a time and launch them along sort of like this which is relatively fun to look at but then they can still group up and then of course as it goes along it gets less efficient because they start grouping up again and the bug strikes again you could also send all your items around in one big circle but then they eventually all clump up into one big pile and they don't get sorted, so they just despawn. The other solution is to split your item streams into singular hopper lines, and each one of those hopper lines has their own dedicated storage system that uses standard item filters, and each one of those sorts 9,000 items per hour. Now, if you have a farm that produces 250,000 items an hour, that gets to be a lot of storage. Like, this right here is a single slice of the build, but it has six item filters, so it's six times hopper speed, and that uh, all feeds into one item item output. I built 40 or 50 of these on Truly Bedrock Season 2 for a single piglin bartering farm just because of this bug. So how it works is you launch all of your items, they get picked up by some hopper minecarts underneath this area, and then all the items get distributed between a couple of double chests, and then they eventually get sorted out into multiple different hopper lines, and each one of those hopper lines has their own basic item filter underneath of it that eventually leads to the main storage. It is a giant hassle, a giant pain, it causes a ton of lag from hundreds of hoppers, all because of one bug. I did try and compact the system even more and I designed this thing on a live stream that sorts out items to either side of the water stream perfectly spaced so that not a single item ever gets missed. And the idea behind this is that you have two single speed item sorters on either side. So you get 18,000 items per hour per water stream. And then you can build a bunch of these for however many items your farm produces. This is a janky four times speed item sorter. So it works four times faster 
faster than a regular sorter, meaning that if we drop a stack of items on there, it's just going to blitz through those and sort those really quickly and then smash them into your storage system faster than normal. So if you have a farm that produces 36,000 items or less, you just have one of these item sorters for every item that it produces going down the line, and then you either have one launching system or one water stream, and that sorts all of your items as quickly as it can, and you don't miss any items, and it just works with no bugs. It is great. Basically, what I'm saying is item storage on Bedrock just got about a million times better for all of the mega farms and things that produce so many items. Mega storage systems are gonna work just a lot better nowadays, and it's gonna be so, so nice. Once this fix is actually released in the game, I will have a full tutorial for mega storage that you can add on to a raid farm, guardian farm, or anything else that produces so many items. But now hopefully you understand the pain that we've been going through with this bug for the last couple of years. Let's hop into the other changes from this beta. Large magma cubes will no longer spawn in a too tall space in the nether, and large slimes will no longer spawn in a too tall space in the overworld either. I'm pretty sure this bug was fixed at one point in the past, but... I guess it's been fixed again. There's been a bug fix to entering villages with bad omen. And so now if you enter a village while in a minecart or riding something or flying with your elytra, it will properly start a raid. This is a great fix for various raid farms that use minecarts to move you around or just general gameplay. There's been a great bug fix to tool durability when attacking a mob. Your durability used to get completely worn out, but as you can see, durability lasts a lot longer when attacking mobs now. I was actually able to kill that rabbit with like a quarter of a wooden sword. Previously, the wooden sword would break in like, you know, four or five seconds of attacking a mob. As you can see, it used to consume nearly two wooden swords just to kill one Ravager. So you're going to be saving like 75 or 80% of your tool durability when spam attacking mobs. There's also been one other bug fix to two Ravagers. These guys will now properly attack the player when they're standing on top of mud and other smaller blocks. As you can see, well, just one hit kill. No anticipation, no anything. Thing. just ends the kill okay cool personally that seemed like a rather useful feature but at least we still have the feature where evokers can't summon fangs or vexes when they're standing on top of ice nobody report this it's actually really 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 useful but for real though this is so useful please nobody report it <laughs> i probably shouldn't be talking about it jumping over to hotfix 11951 that just released a couple of days ago this has so many changes in it now the biggest change in this is a bug that was just added in 11950 so they fixed this bug within like a week of it being added but basically this has to do with pistons pushing and pulling blocks and there was actually a duplication glitch that was introduced with this because big surprise pistons are kind of glitchy like that uh, but more importantly blocks in front of the pistons were just randomly getting deleted and that breaks let's see everything ever so tree farms were imploding blocks were just getting deleted rough right center so if you have a redstone device in your world that suddenly broke out of nowhere, maybe go make sure it's not missing an observer or a random block or some slime or something. Another thing I saw you guys in the comments talking about is that the structure block was not having the correct Y value being input when you're trying to modify it and use it, and that bug has also been fixed in this update as well, so now structure blocks work as they should. There is also another beta, 1196023, and this brings several nice changes, but we have have an illegal block notice if you want to collect illegal blocks in your world now is the time because the one is about to get removed so as you might know the respawn anchor has multiple different charges with it there is charge level one two three and four and previously you could actually pick block these different charge levels in creative and place one down with like four levels of charge but you can't do that anymore even if you control pick block you could also silk touch these in survival mode to get a respawn anchor with multiple different charges already in it, but as you see, that's no longer the case. If you collected the illegal respawn anchors before this change was implemented, you can still keep them. As you can see, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 levels of our respawn anchors. Once 11960 is released, you'll no longer be able to acquire these blocks, so collect them now while you can, because no one else is going to have these in the future updates. And honestly, they do look pretty cool. I mean, I like them. I'm going to get some of these myself. Honestly, the respawn anchor is just such a cool block. Lock. I mean, it's a cauldron full of nether portal. Where else are you going to get such a cool thing? 
Yeah, it also explodes. The Skulk Shrieker has also been upgraded slightly. So previously you could only hear this thing shrieking from 16 blocks away, but that has been upgraded to 32 blocks. As you can see, we're quite far away and we can still hear this thing. So basically you're just gonna be getting more jump scares in the ancient city. You might've heard, but campfires have been kind of nerfed on a bedrock edition. This caused a little bit of a Twitter rage, but basically the change is, is that campfires no longer set mobs on fire. So if you step on here, you're not gonna get caught on fire. Mobs don't get caught on fire either, but it still damages the mobs. So as you can see, if this chicken would run around, yeah, it's not on fire anymore. Campfires used to actually, you know, have a fire in them. So they would actually light mobs on fire and they would stay on fire when they're not in the campfire. But now campfires are fireless because they're not... They're just, they're just camps now. I don't know, man. What, what else do you want me to say? The reason why this was done is because campfires on Java Edition don't actually set the mobs on fire. They only damage them. So it's a small parody change, but it does have some meaningful implications. For instance, if you have a passive mob farm or a hoglin farm that you just designed three weeks ago, uh, yeah, it's no longer going to actually cook the food. So there's no longer a good way of killing passive mobs in a mob farm while also cooking the food at the same time. So as you can see in this hoglin farm right here, the hoglin is big enough to clip into the campfire, so it's taking damage from it, but previously it would be on fire, so it actually used to drop cooked food, but now it only drops raw food. Luckily for this specific farm, you can replace the campfire with just a regular piece of fire, and that will still cook the hoglin just fine, but it's kind of silly that one farm that is seemingly incredibly basic and uses like the most simple mechanics can still be broken randomly out of the blue, because, like, reasons, I guess? I was gonna complain about this bug where soul campfires, soul fire, fire campfires, and magma blocks all do the same amount of damage and kill mobs at the same rate, but it was actually fixed. I don't know when it was fixed, but as you can see, soul campfires and soul fire actually kill mobs significantly quicker, which is the intended mechanic. So we can actually use this to our benefit now in a variety of different farms, such as slime farms. The soul campfires still don't catch mobs on fire though, so you can't use it to cook things because reasons. Minecarts and boats will also no longer take damage or get destroyed on campfires either. This feature was low-key kind of handy because you could drop yourself a hopper minecart on top of a campfire, it would get instantly broken, and then all the items would drop out of it, making for an instant minecart unloader. But that mechanic no longer works, so we need to use a fire or something else to instantly kill the minecart, and that's a lot riskier because it actually destroys items, whereas campfires do not. So ultimately, Bug Rock giveth and bug rock taketh with some great features and some mildly weird fixes but it is what it is it's still a good game mojang is still doing an amazing job with the 1.19 update and i can't wait to see what they do with the 1.20 update once they start really focusing on that in the coming months so make sure to subscribe that way you don't miss the future minecraft news anyway thank you so much for watching drop a like if you enjoyed i'll see you guys down in the comments and then there was silence